Hello everybody and welcome to Programming with Ruby episode 11, Ruby Projects. I'm Tyler and this video is brought to you by manwithcode.com. Now, despite what this the name of this episode may imply, this video is not about making projects in Ruby, but finding projects other people have made and using them and yeah. And I'll also be showing you how to use Ruby Gems, which is a popular way of installing, managing, and keeping up to date various Ruby libraries, tools, etc., which Ruby Gems calls gems. And you also learn how to use the code that you find. Yippee! Alright, so let's get started. First, on finding projects, we'll bring you to rubyforge.org. No spaces, one word, yippee. Now, if you want to find a project, you have quite a few different options. You can use the search bar right here, search for whatever you want. Uh, there's also the very very useful project tree right here, which lets you narrow down different projects by category, depending on what you need. Say you need a text editor, and you know maybe something to do with Emacs. There we go. All right, and there's also the most recent registered and most active and most popular, which can be useful from time to time. There is also github.com, again, no word, uh, no spaces, which looks like this. Uh, they have a lot of different projects hosted on there. They have the really popular project Ruby on Rails hosted on here. Let's just search for Rails. And there we go, we have it right here. And you can see all the files. If you are using git, there's the clone URL right there. It's got everyone who's forked it in the network in a nice graph. Um, it's got different downloads. It's got the wiki. Also, you can do similar things you can. There, here's the most you can do on Ruby Forge. Here's the most recent registered projects. You can go over to the most forked. You can go over to the most popular that people are watching and you can do an even more advanced search and a whole bunch of different stuff and it has a lot of really useful graphs and download options here on github if um, I urge you to get using the version control system git and get a account here on github it's very useful I use it myself so yeah let's see now on to Ruby Gems. Now, if you have installed Ruby via a one click installer, you should already have it installed. I didn't, but of course, I already have it installed. Just type in gem, and if you get something that looks like this, you have it. If you get, you know, no command gem, you don't have it installed. And if you don't, walk yourself over to rubygems.org and go down to downloads and find whichever one's the most useful for you and yes and after you have installed it uh, run the command gem again to see if it's there if it's not the most likely problem is you need to add ruby gems to your path a quick google search will tell you how to do that now for this example i'm going to be showing you the gem hp ricot i hope I've pronounced that correctly. I am assuming I haven't. You just use gem install. Looks like that. But if you are on a Unix like system like me, you will have to have administrator privileges requiring the sudo command to be prefixed to that. And you run that and it will install it. And just wait a little while and it will get installed. Now, this can take a while because it has to check with all its stuff and download it and then if it's uh, asked to be compiled which it is right now or just finished it has to do that and has to install the documentation so this can take a short while to install gems and we're just gonna wait a little while longer if it doesn't finish up soon I'm going to switch over to something else alright switching over to something else Okay, so different gem commands. There is gem list, which shows you all the gems you have installed. You can see I have a ton of them. There is gem uninstall, 
which removes a gem. Uh, not really using Ruby Goo. Oh, sorry. Unix again. Haha. -ha. Okay. There we go, and just uninstalls it that easily. Gem update will update all of your gems for you, or if you just want to update a certain one, like Ruby SDL or whatever you have installed, you can do that. Uh, and I'm not going to run that because that can take a while. Um, and then gem help shows you the help, and then gem help command shows you all of the commands. Very nice, very nice. So let's see if that has installed, and it has. We now have HP Regat, which I still think I'm saying wrong, but whatever. Um, so, pop open a Ruby file. Let's see. I'm gonna open. Whoa, that's a little weird. An example.rb. Clear that from the last lesson. Alright, so to use code from a gem you've installed, you just do require Ruby gems, which gets you access to all the gems, and then require HP Recot, which I have downloaded and installed. Now, you can use require with both source files and install gems, except with source files you don't need to do require ruby gems. No, you don't need any of that, just whatever the name of the source file is. So what that means to you is that you can use require on your own code. You can split your code into different files, which can be useful if your code gets really, really long. Lots and lots of lines, like, uh, see the project I was working on last night had a total of 500 lines and still has, still growing, still growing. And projects like Rails, I believe, have a few thousand lines of code. Quite amazing. So it's useful to split them up into files. Um, there's also the load keyword, which does the same thing, except you can reload a source file. Say if you, again, through the miracle of things like open classes, if you need to like update a class or something and reload it while your program is still running, use the load command, not require. Require will not let you do that. Alright, now, that was a strangely short episode. I know, I am surprised too. We have actually reached the end. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave a comment on the page. Or email me at tyleratmanwithcode.com. I would love to hear from you because, I don't know, I haven't, maybe I've only had like 10 people leave some comments or whatever I'd like to hear more I want to know what you're thinking of this series I any way I could improve it if uh, you've been looking at the website you're not liking it maybe there's something you think you should add or maybe you are liking it and you just think you should tell me tell me I need to know or I want to know so yeah and do not forget to donate five dollars ten dollars will help me more than you probably realize Thank you for watching. Goodbye.